The name Bikini was coined by Parisian automobile engineer Louis Riard, who we can only assume quit his day job to focus his sights on a different kind of smooth, waxed bodywork. Riard took over his mother's lingerie business in 1940, and you could say he began innovating straight away. If by innovating you mean staring at ladies on the beach, which we do. Whilst leering away on the coast of St. Tropez, Riard noticed that the girls were rolling up their swimsuits in order to tan their torsos. The crafty Frenchman was inspired to come up with a design made from only four small triangles of fabric. And an iconic garment was born. He named it the Bikini, after the Bikini Atoll, an atomic bomb testing site in the Pacific Ocean. Riard hoped that his raunchy design might stir up similar feelings of shock and horror in the minds of the public. So it's probably for the best that no nuclear weapons were ever discharged in the Irish village of Cock Hill. Whilst Riard is credited as the creator of the modern bikini, he was by no means the first to stumble upon the revelation that flesh plus sun equals fun. This image is taken from a Roman mosaic dating back to the Diocletian period around 300 AD. Check out her facial expression. What the hell, Chad? I can't believe you drank all my tequila. But evidence suggests that bikinis were around even before this. The earliest known image of the bikini comes from the Chalcolithic era over seven millennia ago. The mother goddess of Chatelhoyuk, an ancient Turkish settlement, was usually depicted wearing a bikini-like costume while straddling two large leopards. Yet another unrealistic expectation for women to live up to. The bikini was marketed as being so tiny it revealed everything about a woman except her mother's maiden name. Unless you had that stitched into the crotch. Riard's string bikini design was made up of only four triangles of fabric and held the unofficial crown of the world's most tempting triangular treat. His marketing campaign boasted that the entire garment could fit into a small matchbox and that a true bikini could actually be pulled right through a wedding ring. And that's pretty symbolic when you think about it because when a husband stares long enough at one, you're sure his marriage is also through. Riard's design was so skimpy he had to hire a model willing to pose nude in order to display the outfit. But his wasn't the only bikini game in town. Fellow Frenchman Jacques Helm introduced a similarly minimalist two-piece design in 1946, and the rival designers engaged in a literal tit-for-tat over whose was the smallest bikini. Both men even hired skywriters to publish their claims for all to see. This bikini war became the sexiest arms race the world had ever seen since 1874, when Queen Victoria outdid Isabella II by displaying an extra inch of ankle. The dirty girl. It actually took the public nearly a quarter of a century to fully embrace the bikini, which is surprising as when someone's wearing one, most people seem pretty keen to go in for a hug. Why so long? mostly because people were pretty modest in those days, unlike now when we are Snapchatting naked selfies all day long. During the 18th century, Western women wore hefty bathing gowns made of wool or flannel, as the modesty laws in place deemed anything too revealing to be inappropriate. One particularly prudish Quaker even created a horse-drawn carriage with a built-in modesty tunnel to allow fully clothed Victorian women to enter the sea privately. Come, ladies, take a look at my modesty tunnel. Um, no thanks. Nothing much had changed by the beginning of the 20th century, and one Coney Island woman was even detained by police for the appalling crime of wearing a bikini beneath her street clothes. By Jove, that wench could be naked under those garments. Seize that brazen strumpet before she corrupts us all. Initially only associated with French fashionistas, the bikini's popularity soared after being worn by the legendary actress Bridget Bardot during the Cannes Film Festival in 1953. Other screen sirens such as Sophia Loren and Marilyn Monroe wore bikinis to enhance their own sex appeal, and after iconic scenes such as Ursula Andress emerging from the sea in a white two-piece during the opening credits to Dr. No, the bikini's place in our hearts and on our boobs was assured. 
This popularity was cemented further with the 1960 release of the song Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini, which caused bikini sales to shoot up faster than Lance Armstrong on leg day. This phenomenon occurred again in the 90s when G-string sales increased thanks to Cisco's thong song. We should all be thankful no one has ever released a funky tune about tidy whities Yes, that's right. For the price of 15 Bugatti Varens, a small island in the Pacific, or a bill for a Kardashian wedding, you too could own the world's most expensive bikini. Created by Susan Rosen using over 150 carats of D-flawless diamonds, this ostentatious holster would set you back a cool $30 million. Just to put that into a more annoying perspective, that's the same amount of money Google's Lunar X mission offers you if you successfully land on the moon. But forget that celestial body. This bikini might not even be that comfortable on your own set of boobs. For this piece of chest jewelry isn't just diamond studded, it's diamond everything. There is no fabric involved, as the diamonds are simply linked together with other diamonds. If you want to let your ex-girlfriend know how mean she was and commit a horrible sex crime at the same time, then do we have the product for you jerks. A German company continued their nation's proud history of innovating on being mean to people by developing a water-soluble bikini. Named the Get Naked Bikini, it looks, feels, and fits like a real piece of swimwear. But once you get into the water, it begins to completely dissolve leaving the wearer in the non-too-hilarious situation of being stark but naked. The item is being marketed as a form of revenge for guys who were recently dumped, because, obviously, every girl loves it when their ex sends them bikinis through the mail. When you think of the Miss World competition, you think of scantily clad ladies in bikinis making strange speeches about politics whilst grubby old men watch. Pretty accurate, right? Wrong. Whereas there are obviously bikinis during the swimwear round, no woman has ever been crowned Miss World whilst wearing one since the very first competition. This is even stranger when you consider the original title was the Festive Bikini Contest. Why did it change? Because the Pope said so. That's like banning hot dogs from a hot dog eating contest or abusive parents from a child beauty pageant. In 1951, the inaugural Miss World was won by bikini-clad Kiki Hackinson from Sweden. When the crowning ceremony took place, several countries with religious traditions such as Ireland and Spain threatened to withdraw. Pope Pius XII even declared the bikini a sinful item. More recently, there was controversy when Indonesia hosted Miss World and banned the bikini entirely due to religious sensitivities. This wouldn't be so strange if it weren't for the fact that Indonesia's biggest tourist attraction is the island of Bali, a party island so full of scantily clad tourists it makes the Playboy Mansion look like a conservative dinner dance. Princess Leia's golden bikini from Star Wars Episode VI sent geek hormones raging in 1983, and the Slave Leia costume is now one of the most popular outfits amongst cosplay enthusiasts. Now, if this metal contraption looks uncomfortable, that's because it is. There were two versions, one made of metal for when Carrie Fisher stood still, and a rubber version for stunt work. Neither was especially forgiving, and Fisher described the outfit as something supermodels would wear on the seventh ring of hell. Ironically, she actually asked for this style of risque costume as she felt she didn't appear feminine enough in the previous Star Wars movies. The bikini was created from a mold of Fisher's torso and the man who was assigned to this delightful job became so excited he had to be replaced. The metal version was also so inflexible that frequent wardrobe malfunctions occurred, despite the fact that there was a wardrobe assistant specifically hired to ensure Carrie Fisher's breasts didn't pop out. This led to a whole lot of retakes and a pretty X-rated blooper reel we suspect lies in some cameraman's basement to this day. Bikini scientists are locked away in darkened rooms as we speak, coming up with even more new and innovative improvements. The most irritating thing about wearing a bikini is, of course, tan lines. But new tan-through swimsuits which combat this are now on sale. They work using thousands of tiny pores to let enough sunlight through without making you appear naked. 
so nobody needs to go topless or visit a nude beach again. Wait, that's not good. You fools, what have you done? On the opposite end of the modesty scale, there is also the fabulously named Burkini. If you thought that was the name for drinking a martini out of a lady's swimwear, then prepare to be disappointed. By putting a bikini and a burka into a small room and forcing them to recreate, an Australian company has invented a more conservative swimsuit which respects Islamic values. These suits are similar to those worn in Victorian times, as they cover everything bar the face, but because they're made from lycra instead of wool, there's less chance of drowning which is always a bonus. Other bikini innovators include swimsuits with built-in sensors, bikini bottoms with LED crotch lights, and even a solar-powered bikini which enables you to charge your electronics while you sunbathe. I think I have a good idea where the USB port is.